Hi friends, I hope you enjoyed chapters one and two of The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane. Tonight we're gonna to continue with chapters three and four. Remember when we left off, they talked about the ship, but didn't give us any more information. I also hope you used those talking points to talk with the people around you to try and figure out some of those questions that I asked you. There's going to be more after I read chapters three and four. Are you ready? Here we go. Chapter three. She is called the Queen Mary, said Abilene's father. You and your mama and I shall sail on it all the way to London. What about Pellegrina, said Abilene. I will not go, said Pellegrina. I will stay. Edward, of course, was not listening. He found the talk around the dinner table excruciatingly dull. In fact, he made a point of not listening if he could help it. But then Abilene did something unusual, something that forced him to pay attention. As the talk about the ship continued, Abilene reached for Edward and took him from his chair and stood him in her lap. And what about Edward, said her voice high and uncertain. What about him, darling, said her mother. Well, will Edward be sailing on the Queen Mary with us? Well, of course, if you wish, although you are getting a little old for such things as China rabbits. Nonsense, said Abilene's father jovially. Who would protect Abilene if Edward was not there? From the vantage point of Abilene's lap, Edward could see the whole table spread out before him in a way that he could never when he was seated in his own chair. He looked upon the glitter, glitter, glittering array of silverware and glasses and plates. He saw the amused and condescending looks of Abilene's parents, and then he met Pellegrina's eyes. She was looking at him in a way that a hawk hanging lazily in the air might study a mouse on the ground. Perhaps the rabbit fur on Edward's ears and tails and the whiskers on her nose had some dim memory of being hunted, for a shiver went through him. Yes, said Pellegrina, without her taking her eyes off Edward, who would watch over Abilene if the rabbit were not there? That night, when Abilene asked, as she did every night, if there would be a story, Pellegrina said, Tonight, lady, there will be a story. Abilene sat up in bed. I think that Edward needs to sit here with me, she said, so that he can hear the story, too. I think that's best, said Pellegrina. Yes, I think the rabbit must hear the story. Abilene picked Edward up and sat him next to her in bed and arranged the covers around him. Then she said to Pellegrina, We're ready now. So, Pellegrina, she coughed. And so the story begins with a princess. A beautiful princess, Abilene asked. A very beautiful princess. How beautiful. You must listen, said Pellegrina. It's all in the story. Chapter four. Once there was a princess who was very beautiful. She shone as bright as the stars on a moonless night. But what difference did that make? She was beautiful. None, no difference. Why did it make no difference, asked Abilene. Because, said Pellegrina, she was a princess who loved no one and cared nothing for love, even though there were many who loved her. At this point in the story, Pellegrina stopped and looked right at Edward. She stared deep into his painted on eyes. And again, Edward felt a shiver go through him. And so, said Pellegrina, still staring at Edward, what happened to the princess, said Abilene. And so, said Pellegrina, turning back to Abilene, the king, her father, said that the princess must marry. And soon after this, a prince came from a neighboring kingdom and he saw a princess and immediately he loved her. He gave her a ring of pure gold. He placed it on her finger. He said these words to her, I love you, but do you know what the princess did? Abilene shook her head. She swallowed the ring. She took it from her swing finger and swallowed it. She said, this is what I think of love. And she ran from the prince. She left the castle and went deep into the woods. And so, and so what, said Abilene, what happened then? And so the princess became lost in the woods. She wandered for many days. Finally, she came to a little hut and she knocked on the door. She said, let me in, I'm cold. There was no answer. She knocked again. She said, let me in, I'm hungry. A terrible voice answered her. The voice said, enter if you must. The beautiful princess entered and she saw a witch sitting at the table, counting pieces of gold. 3,622, said the witch. I'm lost, said the beautiful princess. What of it, said the witch. 3,623. I'm hungry, said the princess. 
not my concern, said the witch. 3,624. But I'm a beautiful princess, said the princess. 3,625, replied the witch. My father, said the princess, is a powerful king. You must help me. There will be consequences. Consequences, said the witch. She looked up from her gold. She stared at the princess. You dare talk to me of consequences? Very well, then. We will speak of consequences. Tell me the name of the one you love. Love, said the princess. She stamped her foot. Why must everyone speak of love? Whom do you love, said the witch. You must tell me the name. I love no one, said the princess proudly. You disappoint me, said the witch. She raised her hand and said one word, Farth Figury. And the beautiful princess was changed into a warthog. What have you done to me, squealed the princess. Talk to me of consequences now, will you? Said the witch, and she went back to counting her pieces of gold. 3,626, said the witch, as the warthog princess ran from the hut and out again into the forest. The king's men were in the forest too, and what were they looking for? A beautiful princess. And so when they came upon an ugly warthog, they shot him immediately. Pow! No, said Abilene. Yes, said Pellegrina. The men took the warthog back to the castle and the cook slid open its belly and inside it she found the ring of pure gold. There were many hungry people in the castle that night and all of them were waiting to be fed. So the cook put the ring on her finger and finished butchering the warthog. And the ring that the beautiful princess had swallowed shone in the cook's hand as she did the work. The end. The end, said Abilene indignantly. Yes, said Pellegrina, the end. But it can't be. Why can't it be? Because it came too quickly. Because no one's living happy, happily ever after. That's why. Ah, and so, Pellegrina nodded. She was quiet for a moment. But answer me this. How can a story end happily if there is no love? But, well, it's late and you must go to sleep. Pellegrina took Edward from Abilene. She put him in his bed and pulled the sheet up to his whiskers. She leaned close to him. She whispered, you disappoint me. After the old lady left, Edward lay in, a sm in his small bed and stared up at the ceiling. The story he thought had been pointless, but then most stories were. He thought of the princess and how she'd become a warthog. How gruesome, how grotesque, what a terrible fate. Edward said, Abilene, I love you. I don't care how old I get, I will always love you. Yes, yes, thought Edward. He continued to stare up at the stealing, ceiling. He was agitated for some reason that he could not name. He wished that Pel Pellegrina had put him on his sight so that he might look at the stars. And then he remembered Pellegrina's description of the beautiful princess. She shone as bright as the stars on a moonless night. For some reason, Edward found comfort in those words and he repeated them to himself. As bright as the stars on a moonless night. As bright as the stars on a moonless night. Over and over, until at last the first light of dawn appeared. Okay, so here's your talking point. Are you ready? How does Pellegrina's story apply to Edward? And why did Pellegrina tell that story? Talk that over with the people around you. Also, I want you to do one more thing. Turn to the person who is listening with you and tell them something you are proud of yourself for doing this week. All right, Hornets, I'll see you tomorrow for chapters five and six.